I like dirty sheets. <laughs> Get down, sister. Like I was locked in a galactic battle and I was just trying to find the bathroom. Like, you know, you're like, oh, wait. <laughs> this really could have been a single in another timeline for sure. I feel like a lot of people are just throwing their tracks at these girls. Totally. Viewer discretion is advised. Your fave will be criticized. That's Jan. That's Chris. And welcome to CCTV, the nonstop pop show. And today we're reviewing Girls Aloud's debut album, Sound of the Underground. Welcome to CCTV, your go-to global pop music podcast. Join us for a unique experience as we combine our artistic expertise from the studio and performing on stage with insider knowledge from working behind the scenes. Get ready for insightful reviews, in-depth analysis, and captivating discussions about the songs and careers of your favorite artists. Plus, we have exclusive interviews with a diverse range of music industry professionals, including artists, producers, choreographers, and more. Become part of our fantastic crew, including Lisette, Lily, Emily, Kevin, and Juliet, by joining us on Patreon at patreon.com slash cctvpops. Or you can subscribe now and let's explore the world of pop music together. Mm -hmm. And today we're talking about pop royalty. It's Girls Loud. And they're celebrating their 20th anniversary of their Ooh. debut album. So we have done a Girls Aloud Pop 101 episode before where we did mm -hmm. discuss their whole career and journey. So definitely go check that out. But any new thoughts on Girls Aloud, Jan? Oh, uh, you know, since 2020, new fans still, still a baby and still in my infancy. Um, I like them. Um... I have the pajamas they made because you got them for me. I'm so excited. I wear them all the time. I've worn them things out, okay? Um, <laughs> I don't have any other merchandise from them, unfortunately. But I do I do enjoy them. I don't have like, their CDs or anything, but I do listen to them. And um, uh, they're like my, they were my favorite new girl group before like New Jeans came around and like a La Seraphim and K-pop side. But I was like, I need a new girl group to get into. So yeah, they are definitely, they've definitely been that for me. So Shower Time has always been fun with the 10 album. And I will say that, okay? What about you? Nice. Yes. I mean, I've been a huge fan since the very beginning. Um, I used to watch Top of the Pops every week. Uh, and, you know, they got Christmas number one in 2002. And the second I saw that performance, I was already, like, interested. And it just oh, right, was right. a downward spiral after that. Downward <laughs> Not downward. An but, you know, I went down heaven. the hole of, you know, Girls Aloud oh, fandom. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> up the hole? Maybe up the hole sounds more positive. Yeah, ascending, ascending <laughs> into heaven with a bunch of Victoria's Secret angels that could sing. That's that's my that's how I, I was like, Chris, they're all beautiful. They look like Victoria's Secret angels. He's like, funny yeah. you should say that. And then shows me a video of them <laughs> modeling. Oh, yeah, the show. <laughs> but yeah, so this is an interesting era because they didn't really start out looking like Victoria's Secret oh, right. models, though. You know, they were very young. Um, it took yeah. them a minute to figure out their image, figure out their sound. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Before the so... Invisalign, before the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing because I definitely, I definitely need braces myself. So don't come at, don't come at me for coming at them. Um, but yes, that being said, we're going to hop right into it and talk about Sound of the Underground. Yes. So Sound of the Underground is British sensation Girls Aloud's debut album, and it was originally released May 23rd, 2003. And as I noted, it is celebrating its 20th anniversary this year, 2023, with a special deluxe release. So it is the perfect time for us to take a little deep dive. Yeah. Uh, going down the hole, actually, now. <laughs> <laughs> up the hole, up the hole. <laughs> oh, we're going up the hole. Yeah, deep dive up the hole. <laughs> I love that. Um, so after winning Pop Stars The Rival, a talent competition aired on ITV. Girls Aloud was signed to Polydor Records, and the album is the only project by the group that was not fully produced by the Xenomania team, and it features tracks done by other notable British musicians. After turning in the first draft of the album to the label, Brian Higgins from Xenomania heard it and was not impressed and convinced Polydor Records to let him and his team replace some of the songs just a month prior to the album's release date. The album peaked at number two on the UK album charts and the project was eventually repackaged and re-released in November 2003 following the success of Jump. But we will stay true to the original track list for today's episode. Look at them doing a repackage. You know what? Come on now. We love a good repackage. I want to try one one day. A repackage is just throw some songs I didn't 
<laughs> That'd be fun. Just this hair. Here's I just love that, that that has become a K-pop staple. More on the yeah. SM side, right? Like uh, yeah. some of the other labels don't really do it anymore. But Girls Aloud were setting the trend too back then. <laughs> True that. Oh my God. Look at you guys. Look at you ladies. So let's jump right into it and go track by track to discuss the production, vocals, and lyrics and give our ratings for each song. Be sure to join along in the comments section below and let us know what your ratings are and let us know what your favorite tracks are because we will definitely read them and respond. So let's have mm -hmm. it to and it. And your least favorite tracks because that's oh. sometimes more fun to discuss, right? Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So the very first song on the album is Sound of the Underground. And this one was done by... Members of Xenomania, Brian Higgins, Miranda Cooper, and Niara Scarlett. And this was mm. Girls Aloud's debut single, released only 16 days after the final lineup of the group was chosen on Pop Stars of the Rivals. It was 2002's Christmas number one and remained at the top of the charts for four weeks. And the song remains and is continuously referenced as a timeless British pop classic. Mm-hmm. Definitely. An alternative vocal mix of the song was released in 2022 on vinyl, which featured different vocal takes and different members singing different lines. And all the proceeds went to the Sarah Harding Breast Cancer Appeal, which is part of the Christie Charitable Fund. And this mix and a brand new accompanying music video using unreleased footage was released in April 2023. Oh, man, this song, buddy, 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 buddy. You know, I think it's so cool, uh, the genre mixing in this track and it is i think every time i i've seen the, the concerts that you showed me it's always like a, a big hit with the car like oh my god yes i mean i get it, it's a christmas number one but it also it's actually good it's actually good um <laughs> yes i guess with me like growing up here in america it's one of those things where it's like when you watch the like american idol or any of those other shows the debut single the, the christmas single would always be like this cheesy like ballad not even cheesy it doesn't have to be cheesy but just a ballad and you're like what the heck so i like mm -hmm. that pop stars were like nah no 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 i got two weeks let's let's put something out let's put something out right now i think it fits too not to sit here and be like Ooh, we won the competition like, i mean to be fair they actually did have the b-side to sound of the underground yeah. was a it was a really boring cover of stay another day which we'll talk about another episode but i think that was <laughs> it was either that or sound of the underground um, yeah. and from what oh. i read I don't know if it was members of Girls Aloud or, or contestants that did not make it in, but mm. some of them were very confused originally oh, <laughs> by I mean, Sound of the Underground. So that makes sense. This this is a little strange one, and it wasn't their rival, like the the guy, the the boy oh, one group. True like, voice. Yeah, sorry guys, not for nothing. Sound of the Underground kicked your butt. Okay, they came <laughs> in with surf guitars and this nice little UK drum pattern that we have come to love and like on the show. I mean, we always liked it, but we talk a lot about it on the show, and it's always like a mild bias i feel like oh it's uk garage or like jumping bass oh we like it um mostly me over here but um it makes the song feel really cool and daring especially with that surf guitar i feel like you know i'm on a jet ski in a bond movie and they're the bond girls um i liked it i think mixing the elements of pop and dance and punk that's what makes the song uh capsulates the whole energy and rebellious spirit of this album and like what music was going at the time and even the way the girls looked they had like this really edgy look with the the pin straight hair and the and the humps and, and the hair and the eyeliner and the eyeshadow and the lack of eyebrow like that was all the rage back in the day because I remember not having eyebrows. Um, <laughs> I read somewhere uh, speaking of reading in places uh, that Samantha Mumba actually passed on this track, which is crazy. But I can think of, I can I can hear it right. The first verse and the second verse are so and I can't lie, Nicola and um Sarah, their voices lean more toward like a higher pitch. So when they start going lower, it gets a little thin and it sounds almost a little too like innocent. It's not the right word, but like it's almost too thin. But the other women like Kim, um, Nadine, Cheryl, let me saying Kim like her like her best friends, but you know, <laughs> they kind of have a thicker tone so they can sit on that comfortably and go into their lows and make it kind of sound a little bit more like sultry. Um, but yeah, I, I would have been so interested to hear what Samantha would have done with it because she opted for I'm right here. And I'm like, girl, <laughs> no offense, <laughs> but girl. <laughs> um, the song is definitely cool. Like I said, coming from a survival show mm -hmm. um, or a reality show, excuse me, competition show, it sets a nice tone for the group in general. Cause it's just like, after this, they can either get really cool, even more cooler or they can just get worse. And yes. luckily it just, you know, as we continue throughout this album, we'll find out what happens, right? Um, and shoot, even their name is cool. Girls Allowed, like, come on. It's so much better than No Boys Allowed. 
right on the mm-hmm. nose. It's like, no, the girls are allowed and they are allowed. The voices are allowed. So I love that. Um, and uh, the iterations of the live performances definitely show a lot of vocal growth because that first one that they did at Top of the Pops was like, it was mm. nice, but they started adding more experimentation and take more risk with the melodic interpretation of certain parts. So it just made things more fun um, for sure. I think this song is, is cool. I like it. Love. Yes. And it's aged really, really well, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah. I mean, that guitar riff, down and down and that's already cool. Like, I remember the first yeah. time I heard that, like, no other girl group was really doing any sound like this. Yeah. So, already when it gets kind of metallic and the bass line is so strong, and it just, yeah. it just stood out immediately from the second I heard it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when you have a title like Sound of the Underground, I, you know, you naturally think of the subway and like mm. dark tunnels and stuff. Yeah. And the song does feel like that like it yeah it genuinely feels like you're like underground Some life. subculture <laughs> like <laughs> so yeah the whole build of the song is really cool i love the keyboard hits that come in the pre-chorus that really build a lot of tension and then you know the train arrives when the chorus comes you know <laughs> like it's super rocky the guitar riff becomes really upfront in the mix as well oh, yeah. and then it pulls back again for the verses so i think the mm-hmm. whole dynamic is really well done Mm -hmm. Um, mentioning the vocal like you yeah like you had mentioned the the whole song is sung pretty low and i think as they got older their voices also naturally got older so it became a bit easier to sing but it was Mm -hmm. kind of a struggle for them i think at first to kind of project like when you watch some of the first few performances um especially the one when they on pop stars um when they had like found out that they had gotten the number one like that was a bad vocal yeah. Um, but in the recording, I think they did a good job. I think, you know, the whole point of it is to be kind of icy and kind of yes. cold throughout the whole thing. Yeah. And really, aside from Nadine's kind of more soulful bridge, they all handle that pretty well. Mm-hmm. I do think Nicola did get shafted a little bit in the vocal distribution. So it was yeah. nice to hear her sing a couple more lines uh, in the alternative version. Oh, yes, totally. Um, yeah. Totally. And then Kimberly actually noted in her autobiography that... W- I think the very first version that they had heard. So basically, Brian recorded all 10 of the final contestants. Uh And so they had all these different versions of the songs, depending on the different lineups. But I guess the first version he submitted, Kimberly wasn't in it at all. So it was just the other four. (laughs) So the version they recorded the video to actually was like not the final one, which is why they have the footage of them all singing the entire song. So that's interesting. That's dope. Um, That's dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) You never Um, know what's going to happen. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Going on to the music video, though, I love it. What do you think of the video? The video is interesting because it's just in this cage. Again, it's giving subculture, like, it's it's where the freaks live, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Except they're, like, what, 17? (laughs) Right. The youngest, youngest, I think. Nicola was maybe 16, actually. Yeah, Yeah. she was a baby at the time. Oh, my goodness. Uh, But, yeah, no, it's it's just giving... You know, we're the cool girls. You know, we smoke cigarettes out here. We pink ladies, but not. Um, you know, it's so funny. Like last night, well, well, last night, we were recording this on May 22nd. But last night I performed and I sang with the mic stand. Now that I'm watching the video, I was like, oh, snap. I should have done the sound of the underground choreography. I literally thought you did that because you had were thinking of this. I was like, oh, she's doing sound of the underground. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's so fun because I, I jokingly say that they couldn't dance in our Pop 101. <laughs> <laughs> but this was fun choreography like they they can dance i just think it's so funny how sometimes they have to do certain things you can tell who's comfortable who's not but whose personality makes up for the lack like kim look him sarah's not a dancer but you can't tell her she ain't got personality mm. right so i think those are kind of things that you look at and you're like you know what these girls are gonna be fine they're gonna be darn fine okay and that's why i like that's why i liked about the video it was just one scene kind of just looking around at each other ooh, ladies smoldering and such but you see the personality um not one scene but that one performance scene specifically i think it's just you can tell like they're still they're still good at what they do individually not like or a group yet but it still doesn't feel like i'm trying to outdo the other so i appreciate mm-hmm. that for sure yes it is kind of insane that they literally filmed it i think maybe two days after they got into the group yeah, uh, they yeah, did a really like, good job. Like, you're right. They didn't try and overdo it. They're all quite subtle in it. And Cheryl and Nadine, yo, that star mm-hmm. quality is jumping out already. Yeah, yeah. That totally. smizing that you get from them is insane. 
Um, They're good at it. So good. Yeah. At it. And I do love the mic stand routine. It's yes. definitely one I point to a lot because, you know, I love a mic stand routine, but I think mm-hmm. a lot of that comes actually from from this <laughs> as well. <Crying>. Um, <laughs> I also love in the music video, the part that always makes me laugh is Nadine's bridge because she's lip syncing. It's the sound like with an it's M. Sound, Have you yeah, noticed yeah. that? It's, it's so sound, weird. Uh, I don't understand. It's the <laughs> sound. Uh, like a toothless <laughs> she's um, great yeah Ugh. but yeah going into the performances and kind of just the evolution of it mm. i i like that they for the, a lot of it they've not always done the mic stand routine oh yes but they yeah. do still reference it like i think mm-hmm. the tangled up one is my favorite where they kind of use their male dancers that's the props instead but if you yeah. actually watch the routine that they're doing, it's actually an interpretation of the mic stand routine. <laughs> yeah. So I kind of love that. Like, it's kind of awesome that they did that. Um, and yeah, just watching their confidence grow as performers. Uh, mm-hmm. Like when you when you watch the 10 performance, like vocally, it's kind of a mess. That whole Ooh, tour yeah, kind of is. Okay. But just you can just feel, though, like how powerful they are as a unit. Yeah, totally. And it's just such a huge evolution from, you know, the beginning when obviously it took a minute to like get the chemistry right. So, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Chemistry. We love that album too. Mm. Um, let us know if you want us to have a review of that. You see how I did that? Look at that. That's Look welcome to that. CCTV, y'all. That's what we do. Yes. <laughs> give us a comment. Give us a comment. Us All know. right. <laughs> um, so, what do you rate this one? I'll give this one a 10. I can't lie. I liked it when I first heard it too. <laughs> I'm a sucker. <laughs> it's a 10. Up next is No Good Advice by the members of Xenomania, Miranda, Brian, Nick Cooler, Lisa Cowling, Lene Nystrom of Aqua, best known for Barbie Girl. This is the lead single from the album, and it peaked at number two. And Brian said he was feeling inspired by a failed deal with a record label and the idea of persisting in spite of people's advice. (laughs) felt that (laughs) he also noted that the girls allowed members were unsure if the song fit their sound when they first heard it but he questioned them and they changed their mind and their historic partnership was solidified come through Mm -hmm. alliance (laughs) yes it's so funny because reading those interviews uh, you know about kind of after the fact when brian was like yeah they didn't like these songs i was giving them (laughs) like they thought they wanted to just kind of do the generic girl group thing and i'm just very happy that they rethought it and also the label didn't let that happen (laughs) oh should i hear that this song is awesome like what a perfect follow-up to sound of the underground like it's it's still accessible to all the fans that loved it but it's still different enough that it's not derivative Mm -hmm. and it fits their age as well like this kind of like middle school high school brattiness of it Mm -hmm. it's kind of awesome yeah. while still be accessible to like an a slightly older audience as well like i can still sing along to this song and still relate to like a lot of it so oh heck yeah yeah he wasn't made a bad decision it was just like you know what it's okay i'm not gonna listen and also to someone gives you advice and you're just like i don't need your what? advice I don't need to take that please don't <laughs> yeah. um but yeah so the production is really cool it's rocky but it's super processed too so it's not yeah. just like a bad rock song like it's actually like a cool dynamic there the drums are clearly fake but then the guitars are really prominent and like that yeah. riff is really really cool uh and i love the staccato production of the verses like dan 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 and then you get kind of the longer kind of the more mm. wide feeling kind of guitars and everything mm-hmm. that come in for the chorus it's just again a very nice build um vocally nadine owns this one like i think <laughs> brian from the very beginning i mean she got the you know she got the whole bridge and sound of the underground like yeah. he was i think from my understanding he was very captivated by her voice from the very beginning so even though you know there isn't an official lead singer here but you know yeah. you look through their discography and she clearly was that role dominating um, yeah <laughs> and it's just such a unique vocal tone and she sounds awesome mm-hmm. um i do love the unison pre-chorus because it kind of just adds to that kind of angstiness of like a bunch of like young people yelling uh yes. and then i'm very excited for the uncensored version to come out because that last line in the pre-chorus never made any sense so it finally will I'm in tears, <laughs> yeah. you know, when you're trying to keep it clean and pop, right? <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. Um, and then, of course, have to shout out the talky ending of the song. Mm-hmm. Um, again, just the perfect amount of sass there with all the vocals. I love Nicola's last line. And frankly, I don't even care. Like, so nonchalant. 
Um, and that's... you like that one? I like dirty sheep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I agree with you. I, I think this is such a rebellious little track. It is bratty, but it's not like petulant. Um, and I think that's because the catchy hooks, the harmonies, um, the unison singing, the, the believable attitude, that's what helps too. It doesn't feel like, you know, oh, here I go on the end. It's just like, no, it's like, here I go on the road, a metal finger to the way. That's so fun. Um, and also again, it's just rebellious. It has like that punk spirit without being a punk song. Right. And mm -hmm. so I think that, that, that helps their appeal. Um, and I feel like this song just it, because of all those collective qualities that I listed, it, it makes the song feel like an, a, an anthem with some depth rather than some tune for a tantrum. Um, like this song truly embodies like, let me F around and find out for myself. It's 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 definitely, definitely something that I think anyone could relate to. Um, and I know I, I, don't, I can't say that I relate to it. I don't take people's advice. I was kind of a goody goody. But as I've gotten older. <laughs> I'm just like, you know what? I'm starting to see that you are saying something that doesn't make any sense <laughs> or nothing I want to apply to myself. So I kind of go, I don't need no, in my head all the time. I don't know why. <laughs> I know why. I just said it. Why? Um, and I love the Sunday trips that they mentioned, like in the speaking part too, or like, you know, going to church and church visits mm -hmm. and stuff like that, because it then kind of leans itself to like the tambourine sound that you hear and the tambourines. Like, I think it's so cheeky to have something like this going on in terms of like the verses and the, I mean the lyrics and then kind of have like a visual cue like in the music video though that music video man what's up with that what's going on can you explain that because you were I you were around for that was find it hilarious I mean I that? assume they were trying to just you know have a unique look and those silver outfits were a choice yeah they were <laughs> definitely a choice <laughs> yeah. um I will say mm. even though those outfits are slightly hideous though I love the album cover like mm. I, I think it is a very memorable look and it is it does stand out like on a shelf you know what i mean yeah. so at the end of the day <laughs> i know they're embarrassed about the outfit than this video too but <laughs> it did its job at the time you it know it did okay um i will say i think it's i like the car and like the phone booth and all that it's more like the overuse of effects that really <laughs> kills this video for me oh you yeah. know like Obviously, the fire near the, the end candy is fire. Yes. awful. But even like the them like glitching in and out, oh, moments yeah. of that were cool. But it was happening so much, so I was like, okay, like <laughs> come up with something else here. <laughs> he said no. <laughs> um, I will say though, like them again as performers, like they did a good job. Like you know, they got they got some new haircuts. You know, oh, yeah. some of the confidence <laughs> has grown a little bit. Um, a lot of them are kind of feeling themselves a lot while they were like, you know on the car and rolling around oh my god stuff. yes so. kim with her hair and her leaning <laughs> <laughs> she's great so you know what i enjoyed it i think it did what it was supposed to do you know yeah. it just has not aged well at all <laughs> no i think the whole thing was just like you know uh, not angels with dirty faces not shout out to sugar babes but it's giving like you know sexy little devils you know um it's just they're proudly naughty those tambourines were giving <laughs> tambourines are a church staple. So for them, it's like, I'm not going to church. <laughs> it kind of made sense. And I started watching it more and I listened to the lyrics. I was like, oh, that explains those random jingle, jingle, jingles mm -hmm. on those performances. Because at first I was like, why y'all got sonic rings right now? Like, it just, <laughs> shing, 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 shing. I was like, oh my God, it's killing me. But now I understand. <laughs> I totally get it now. It's so cheeky. I love that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will say the dancer team, though, is I awful. Um, I think they used the same choreographer for this whole era. I think it wasn't yes. until the show that oh maybe someone God. else came on, but like this choreography, and we'll reference it for the other <laughs> album tracks and stuff that they they performed as well. But like all the like bending over and like it's just like a lot of hair flips that it's just like not very creative. So sorry mm -hmm. to whoever you were that did it, but it just was not inspired. Um, no. <laughs> but the later kind of tour performances and stuff, I love the What Will the Neighbors Say tour performance. Mm -mm. Um, you know, obviously they're in the school girl outfits. Yes. They do have the nod to the tambourine for that little extra dance break they added. So I think yeah. that culminated it in a really good way. Um, and then once they started performing it more, like at the 10 tour and stuff, like the attitude that they yeah. had was absolutely perfect. Like Nadine was doing the absolute most like in a good way <laughs> yeah, during this yeah. song <laughs> i'm crying in, in a good way just wanna... <laughs> yeah so how would you rate this song i will also give this one a 10 how about you yeah i think this is a 10 this is 10 quality for sure 
All right, so moving on to track three, which is Some Kind of Miracle. And this one was done by Miranda Cooper, Brian Higgins, Lisa Cowling, Tim Powell, Sean Lee, and Adele Lynch of Bewitched, who Mm. are all part of the Xenomania team. And it had additional production by Jeremy Wheatley. And so this song was originally chosen as the third single from the album, but Life Got Cold received a huge reception from the fans. So the track was pushed to being the fourth single. But then the group had the opportunity to record Jump for the film Love Actually. So the song was never released as a single. So yeah, it just was not meant to be. Mm -hmm. But the group did actually re-record a single version in a different key and with brand new production. And this version ended up appearing on the re-release or repackage in November 2003. This one is um, interesting. I mean, I could hear this in a rom-com from the 2000s or one mm. of those like Hilary Duff or Lindsay Lohan fronted movies. It's like light and bright and has mm-hmm. some twangy guitar riffs. And it reminds me of something from the 70s. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think psychedelic would be a stretch of a description, I think. Um, I think what really kind of made me feel like, oh, this could be in a in a in like a a Hillary Duff movie or anything like that, like a Freaky Friday even, um, was just the kind of, just the tone that it had. It's it's bright and it's almost kind of pedestrian. And I don't know, not pedestrian, that's not the right word. Oh, it's not fair to say. But I, I don't get the dynan, dynan, dynamism. Oh yeah, there it is. I don't get the dynamism that we got with the other two songs, right? So we're starting right. to kind of hit that lull point. Um, and I have to say lyrically, like, like, the hanging out with the slacker friends pretending that I'm cool line, again, it just gives me teenager. Yeah. So I was just like, yeah, I could see, a, you know, straight to cassette kind of, you know, movie thing, ABC family kind of movie thing going on here. Um, the higher key version, I can't say I don't like it. Um, I actually think it added a little bit of life to the track. Mm-hmm. Um, the distribution, like line speaking, though, isn't great throughout this oh, song. Yeah. So I'm sitting here just like, Okay, where the rest of them at? Like, if I was a new fan and I was trying to, which I, which I was at the time, yeah. I was like, where the rest of them at? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my first question. Where the rest of them at? Um, it would have been nice to have tones like Nicola's or even Sarah, uh, you know, hit those higher notes. Um, mm-hmm. But maybe it wasn't in a comfortable place for them to hit those notes. Like, maybe they recorded it and it was just like, mm, okay, let's get someone else to do it, you know, who has a little bit more of a control mm. over their voice. I mean, it happens in K-pop all the time. Like, you'll have members record a song and then you're like you know what let so-and-so come in or even when we spoke to belinda chapel of bardot she mentioned that everyone recorded this one song but then they realized that one of their members just knocked it out the park so they let her have those parts right so mm-hmm. mm, yeah uh, i think with the vocal distribution stuff for this song it's interesting because the original mm-hmm. album version had way more of sarah and kimberly yeah. they nicola got a line here or there and nadine yeah. and cheryl didn't really come in as often they all kind of it was much more even then yeah. the second one was basically all nadine and cheryl you had <laughs> yeah. some kind of weird duet stuff happening in the pre-chorus yeah. you know where, where the other three would kind of come in and kimberly still got a couple lines but like i also wonder if maybe they thought that people kind of recognize Nadine and Cheryl's mm-hmm. voices more from the past two singles. So maybe right. they wanted them to lead the single version. I think that's mm-hmm. possible as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I do not like the single version uh, at all, actually. I, um, I think it does add some energy and mm-hmm. there are some interesting added elements in the production. Like Nadine does this extra little ad lib at the end of the first chorus that's nice. Um, mm-hmm. But I think it actually takes away from... I think going back to kind of the schoolgirl kind of thing, mm-hmm. it felt like I was at a middle school, high school dance and you have yeah. this like awkward girl in the corner watching her crush yeah. dance with someone else and like having a little mini breakdown in the corner. <laughs> yes, so that kind of like awkwardness, that innocence, yeah. like I think even with the way the vocals are like Sarah and Kim and, and everyone, they sound more innocent. Like Nadine and Cheryl, naturally, I think just the way they sing, they sound more confident. Mm-hmm. The other three feel a little more tepid, I think. And so that yeah. fit with kind of the awkward girl thing. So like, I think if that's what they're going for, I prefer yeah. that if they're going to do that. Um, but I think as a song, like, I'm very glad the universe never let this be a single. <gasps> I don't think it would have done well for them. Because I do think it's just a tad boring. Mm-hmm. Like the chorus melody is a little hypnotizing. Yeah, um, it is a little. And, um, <laughs> and then, you know, there's no bridge, like the ba ba ba's or like, okay, oh, yeah. I don't know. Lazy. Like, it's very pedestrian. Yeah, it just didn't outright. feel fully fleshed out. So, yeah, yeah, the universe didn't want this as a single either. So, mm-hmm. 
it was never meant to be. I will I will personally give this one a seven because it's just it's just average to me. Yes, I will go with a seven point five. Of next is all I need, all I don't by Ava Knox, not Ava Max. I almost said Ava Max. Chris Peters and Drew Peters are they brothers? I believe Cousins? so. Amazing. Yes. Keep it in the family. We love that. All mm -hmm. right. So, Chris, what do you think about all I need, all I don't? <laughs> Sorry, that was a like, terrible rendition of that one. No, I enjoyed that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I actually like this one a lot. I think it's yeah. one of the more experimental tracks on the album. Like, the production reminds me of something Kylie would do. Yes, totally. Like, got the wiry kind of techno synth situation with the really mm -hmm. breathy delivery yes. and i think cheryl and sarah do a really good job the like vocal fry that they put on throughout mm -hmm. the whole thing and how it kind of dry it sounds mm -hmm. it's like yeah no, the whole thing just it it has a really cool vibe to it and then Absolutely. the harmony is super tight in that chorus and then you have yes. nadine leading it so there's kind of a different energy for that as well so mm -hmm. i think the dynamic is pretty cool it does feel like kind of just like a group of female robots Oh my God, this yes. song. <laughs> um, like they can't have water, which is why there's like so much vocal fry. Like, I don't know. I'm it's very, very <laughs> electronic, like very, yeah, metallic again. Um, and then there are like little ad libs at the end too that just give it a little bit more life. Oh my God, so you're funny, I yeah. really enjoyed this one. I remember the first time I heard it, I didn't really think much of it, but through the years, mm. I've grown to appreciate it more. Yeah. Right. That's a good word to say, kind of describe that kind of the feeling that you. The sentiment I have toward the song is appreciation for the attempt at something different. I think on the album, it doesn't, like after listening to everything together, there's nothing that really kind of calls back to it. Uh, it's not bad at all. I enjoy it. I think you, my notes are very similar to yours in terms of like the harmonies. And I there's like this weird like spinny wood sound. I do not know that instrument, that percussion instrument that goes, Thrr. I sound stupid because I can't make a wooden sound. Little things like that just kind of just give it this little quirky feel. And I'm like, how did Xenomania not do this? And I think maybe if they would have to kind of taken the reins a little bit on this one, they could have added some more funkier things or just something else. Like I think the bridge is where it kind of just starts to chill out a little bit because before they start singing again, like there's this instrumental mm -hmm. that just vamps. And I'm like, okay now, any day now. <laughs> so that's the only thing I'm just like, mm, yeah, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think this song is so hypnotizing. And yeah, I can just imagine a bunch of like robots like, oh, all I need, all I don't. Um, have they ever performed this one? I don't think, I don't think no. we looked like, right? See, yeah, this is a track. I would love personally, me, myself, would love to sing on stage just to kind of chill out and kind of have fun with the crowd. Cause this is, it's, it's fun. You just kind of sing. To, it's just, it's easy, mm -hmm. but it also requires a lot of like kind of sultriness. And I think all the girls had it, you know, even Nicola with her young self, cause she could deliver this and still have a good time without feeling the pressure of needing to like belt her face off or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I really do appreciate the vocal ease, but then the, also the technique that's required to actually deliver the song properly. So mm -hmm. yes. Um, but yeah, sonically, I just don't think it fits. Yeah, that makes sense. It's <laughs> funny though, cause I remember mm. back when it was first released, that mm. album cover yeah. is kind of what I would imagine this music video to be like, like a, another oh. callback to more kind of silver, like wires silver, yeah. and stuff everywhere. Like, yeah. I don't know. I always felt that like the album cover could have been like a single cover for this song. Oh, so, that would have been nice. Yeah. Anyway, oh, what do you rate this one? I'll, I'll give it a, I was gonna give it a 7.5. I actually like the song. Probably because it's not like a Kylie track. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give it an eight also. <laughs> The next song is Life Got Cold, and this one was done by Miranda, Brian, Nick, and Lisa of Xenomania. And there is a credit to Noel Gallagher of Oasis, which was added after the song's release <laughs> due to the similarities of the song's guitar riff and chorus melody with Oasis's hit, Wonderwall. Oh, and the song, written about the directionlessness of modern life, was chosen as the third single from the album following a positive reception from fans after the album was released. And it peaked at number three following its release in August 2003. Did you not <laughs> like, notice yeah. the Oasis Dude, like similarities? I was getting so angry last week before we were going to go see Janet last week. I was yeah. going to the bathroom. The song was playing, right? And I'm like, 
like I said, I kept singing, I kept going back to the lyrics of this song. I could not pinpoint. I literally, <laughs> literally, here in my notes, the song has a familiar melody that I can't pinpoint. I sing the song in my mind, but cannot figure out the lyrics. <laughs> the song sounds familiar to a track I've heard before. There you go. <laughs> I'm so irritated. But yeah, no, I, I I like this song because it's one of those not a girl, not yet a woman, like life without direction kind of tracks. It's very wistful. I saw mm-hmm. somewhere that someone said it was wistful. I thought, oh, yeah, that's a great word. And I would say a little cynical as well because the whole I don't believe in Romeos and heroes anymore. I think that is, oh, man, that's tough. Like when you've given up on like finding love or even people being able to save you, like what else is there? Uh, and I think that song, the song leans itself to that. Like once all this is done, once all the words are said, all the things are done being done, what do you have to do? When you look inside yourself, and I'm like, girls, go off, okay? Because Sound of the Underground, the lyrics were very abstract, like r- water running in the wrong direction. That's not really, mm-hmm. you know, it's fun, but it isn't substantial as much as this song is. So it's nice to kind of hear these ladies who are very beautiful, very sultry and awesome, do this kind of song and deliver this kind of lyrics. Um, and losing one's soul as a lyric, it's kind of tough to hear too, because it's like, wow. Um, but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna let you talk about the production point, but when we talk about the music video, I've got to make comments about that because mm-hmm. there was so much going on in terms of the thematic elements of this song in contrast mm-hmm. to what was going on on stage in the video too. Yes. So, uh, yeah, I'm let you go ahead. <laughs> what do you think yeah, about so it? So I was definitely one of the fans <laughs> at the time that was advocating for this as the single. Hmm. I think the first time I heard, or the first couple times I heard this album, this song always really stood out, like was always mm-hmm. super memorable. And of course, the Wonderwall comparison as well, because I remember loving that song too. So I also heard that immediately. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the production overall is nice. You know, it's a nice kind of pop rock guitar led little moment. And I do Mm -hmm. love how melancholic and pensive the whole thing is. You know, you get again, the vocal delivery is really good. Like, again, they all kind of sound a little innocent, but then they all sound a little sad. You Mm -hmm. know, it's just really, yeah, it's really, really dynamic there. And um, I love the lyrics, especially in the verses. Mm -hmm. We text as we eat, as we live. Like some of the... The cadence of it is really interesting. Some of the cho- words chosen to rhyme are not very conventional. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's just super memorable in that way. Uh, and, um, you know, the song has no unison singing. Yes, uh, yes, yes You yes. know, you get some harmonies from Kimberly, but that's pretty much it. So it's just interesting. You know, we, we talk about so much K-pop now, and mm-hmm. I haven't really gone back and really listen to this album and, and girls loud stuff like Same. really deeply in a mm. while like i've kind of just you know had it on the background and stuff mm-hmm. but it's funny just kind of hearing the influences oh my god totally yeah. totally i mean they were taking all those european tracks honestly speaking of like um the tones that you were mentioning and like the, the cadences i was like oh my god how would sugar babe sound singing this like mutia's oh. voice oh my god on some of these oh Oh, oh that would have worked for sure. I'm talking about the MKS version of Sugar Babe. No offense to Heidi. Even Heidi, Heidi has a good high voice. She's good. But I would love to hear like Lost Tapes version of mm. Sugar Babes do this song. Like, oh my mm. God, it'd be so cool. Um, but also we talk about Sugar Babes on the show as well. So be sure to tune that in. It's it's a plug oh, yeah. episode, apparently. Um, but yeah, what do you think about the video, my friend? What are your thoughts? I'm now more excited to hear your thoughts after you just <laughs> gave us that little preview. <laughs> <laughs> it's believe me, it's not that it's not, it's not as special as I'm making it sound, but I'm just like, mm, where is it going? <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I think the music video is kind of boring. Um, it matches the song at least, you know, but like the the blue hue that they put on it is just like really, really dramatic. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. Some of the scenes are nice. Like some of the shots are nice. Like I love Nicola kind of sitting in is it a kitchen or like a cafe or the something? Um, <laughs> they had in a kitchen. By the yeah, water. but like. I like the bus scene, I think is memorable, but yeah, this it doesn't have much replay value for me. <laughs> Not at all. Man, this video is so weird. Cause it's like, it's one of those things where the video doesn't really, I don't know what the direction was in this video. I don't know what the director said to them before they started. I'm not sure if they really know what the lyrics are about cause Zena Media wrote them and I get it. What are you talking about sipping on Coke and stuff? I don't know what is happening. Um, <laughs> because Nicola and Sarah are like somber in the beginning, right? And even Kim, she's sitting there, Mm-hmm. You know, she understand. She understood. But then you got Cheryl and Nadine, Nadine serving face. Yeah. <laughs> and strutting like it's the runway in the Matrix. And I was like, what's going on? Their jackets are flapping. 
And they're like, <laughs> and I'm like, ladies, you know what the song's about? And even the live performances with the choreo, I think what made me go oh, like, Lord. oh, was, was the, 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 the mm-hmm. when, I saw, when I saw the shoulders. All the shoulders out, and the hands. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Whoever Craig got this, no offense, but full on offense. What the heck were you thinking? Okay. Um, what's My favorite on? is after the first course when they all turn back and they do this weird like thing where yeah. they like lift their heads up and like, yeah. oh man, the choreography yeah. for this is awful. <laughs> yeah. Which luckily on God, tour, awful. they just kind of stood there or sat there. Or just sat. That was yeah. the right decision. <laughs> God, yeah. Life sucks. Don't believe in heroes and Romeos no more. Like, come on now. <laughs> I will say, I have to shout out the What Will the Neighbors Say tour version. Mm. The live mm. band sounds so good. And you get so many extra harmonies. Like when yes. Nadine and Sarah are like belting, like the second verse, the start of the second verse, like, ah, uh, the live version it's is just second good. to none. Like it's so much better than the, the original. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's why I like when they, they perform because they actually differentiate from the track itself no need to eat the cd all the time <laughs> k-pop um so yeah that being said what would you what rating would you give this song um i will give this one a nine how about you all right i'm going to give wonder cold also i'm gonna give wonder cold a nine <laughs> <laughs> up next is bars attack <laughs> and it's done by allison clarkson aka betty boo paul carter amanda glanfield and produced by betty boo and the beat masters rumor has it that this song was at one point considered to be the second single before no good advice came along <laughs> <laughs> thank god because it would have been too much of a repeat after sound of the underground oh sometimes music labels don't what the, why would you do I that i know I know. No. I do remember the rumors, though. I think it was called Can't Stop Rockin'. And that title was kind of being, you know, it was in like news articles and stuff like Can't Stop Rockin'. So like, oh, I wow. think that's why everyone was like, oh, this must have been the second single at some oh, point. Wow. Okay. Um, but, yeah, you know, Betty Boo and the Beatmasters are a very yeah. interesting mm. partnership, mm. I guess. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have loved to see what they would have given the group kind of later on. Like after oh. Girls Aloud sound was kind of more established, I think it would be mm-hmm. interesting for them to come back and actually kind of adapt to that. Because oh, I think yeah. these songs, they don't feel like they were written for a girl group, right? Um, <laughs> no. I mean, yeah, I'm talking about this song and then the, other, the couple other ones that we're going to talk yeah. about later. Um, you know, like this song is interesting. Like, first off, it's called Mars Attack. And there's <laughs> no reference of planets or really anything to do with that in any of the lyrics. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I will say it does sound like an alien invasion. You mm-hmm, know, like it's mm-hmm. like aliens partying on a beach or something is what yeah. I picture with this one. <laughs> That's um, funny. But it is fun. It has a really catchy chorus. I think the verses have some interesting moments. Like there's some weird structures and, and little moments that only happen once. Uh, yeah. And I do love the little moment before the final chorus as well. Get down, sister. I'll dance. <laughs> like yeah, it gets yeah, yeah. like weirdly soulful there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I could definitely see, as you mentioned, like why, like if you got Sound of the Underground as the only brief and it's like, hey, we have this brand new girl group. This was their number one single. Like we need more stuff like mm-hmm. this. It makes sense that this is what you would give or come up with. You yeah, know, yeah, um, yeah. it's a little sillier than Sound of the Underground, <laughs> but it still yes. fits in sonically. <laughs> Uh-huh. Um, but really, my biggest gripe with this song is Mm-mm. how prominent Betty's vocals are. Yeah. Like, way louder yeah. than some of the other members. Like, what choice is that? Like, in the performance, <laughs> like, Nicola's lip syncing to something, but it's not her. It's That's not my note. That's my note. <laughs> I said the Nicola, Nicola boop, uh, Nicola boop part. The Nicola Betty, Betty part. I said boop. <laughs> Boo. The Nicola <laughs> boop part. It's, like, it's, just, it's great. It's fun, though. But yeah. let the girl sing. <laughs> yeah like betty like you it's fine if you recorded the demo but like take yourself off it was giving j-lo track it was giving early <laughs> 2000s j-lo track i was like what's going on Why? who left this on here but yeah no um it's one of those things where i think <laughs> it's a good callback to sound of the underground like you said and the, the title reminds me of like one of those beats that you find on youtube where they'll name the beat something and they think they have to name the title of the song that too. You're like, no, that's just the name of the beat. So I had it in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, being a singer that writes songs whose titles will never appear 
in the the, the lyrics whatsoever. I understand it because what, it, what you know because of how frantic as you mentioned it sounded. Um, I think it definitely inj injects a, a dose of fun futuristic pop into this album, along with the sound we already heard with Sound of the Underground, right? That UK that drum pattern and the song blends all these elements of like I want to say disco, but it's almost a little funky, um, electro pop and it's really groovy. It almost feels like. <laughs> Well, not groove is in the heart, but again, it's from this era of music that is just so strange. And then when you hear like dance, dance acts recreate 70s music, 50s music, this is what we get. It's like we have mm. all these synths now. We have computers. It's not just a band playing. Let's see what the heck we can do. And I think this is, is fun because it has like really catchy hooky moments um the 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 one is so frantic that i like so much is Nic nicola's and betty's part the hey baby na, 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 na. <laughs> hey <laughs> baby <laughs> like it's so frantic um and i love that they get a dance break because they shake and wiggle so much again i know i keep joking <laughs> and saying that they can't dance well i didn't say that now but in the pop 101 but whoever choreographed for them has them doing this weird body roll where they scoop down super low like 90 degrees yes. and come back up and i hate it so much no like to be fair <laughs> to what you were saying like they're not giving choreography that is like catered <laughs> to their abilities yeah like it's inherently yeah. awkward yeah and so when you it. have people who are not natural movers like if you watch cheryl and like mm -hmm. kimberly like they they learn to adapt to it so they kind of make it look as good as they can but then I... you have like sarah and nadine they're like you told me to bend over and roll i'm gonna do that all that being said though what would you what would you rate the song because i don't think we had any negative notes but what's no your rating? yeah i think yeah. it's a solid album track i'll give it a 7.5 okay yeah i think it doesn't fit on the album that like well mm, mm, again if it was like oh here's the brief like you mentioned i think that would explain the sound yeah um but yeah I, I, i'll give it a 7.5 to i'll match you all right so the next one is stop which was done by miranda brian and matt gray of xenomania so from mm -hmm. my understanding this was one of those last minute tracks that he added uh you know at you know when he was like these songs really? suck like okay. i'm i need to write replacements very quickly i believe this was one of them um, and lot. you can kind of tell because it's mm -hmm. a little half-baked. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's a nice kind of summer pop track. I like the kind of distorted guitars and the pre-chorus. They're kind of fun. Mm -hmm. But everything is just a little muted. You know, there's mm -hmm. nothing too creative production-wise. Um, Nadine sounds good, you know. I think she did what she could with it. Um, and melodically... I would say parts of it are fun to sing along to. I like the na na nas that kick in for that second chorus as well, mm -hmm, just to give it yeah. a little bit of a build and a little yeah. bit of a structure. But otherwise, it's just a bit forgettable for me, um, especially given kind of the later albums and stuff. Like, this is not a song I ever really turned back to in any way. But I'm so curious. I wish with the deluxe version that they gave us these, these horrible tracks that Brian had to replace, because I'm just so curious what they sound like you know <laughs> is, this, is this a quote <laughs> right i forget what word he used but obviously he felt the need to replace them yeah, last minute so. they were that bad he was like listen i'll risk it all i'll risk it all <laughs> right now just please let me change something <laughs> um this song is um okay 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 it's going back to what i said about um the other song what was it the pedestrian one um oh some kind of miracle some kind of miracle yeah it it's just it's not bad it's just low effort and yeah i mean it's one of those things where it's like we got like a day left put your best hitter in the in the stew do not do anything else don't diff, diff, just throw her in there don't worry about like trying to get the notes right just she can do it and i think that's kind of again it's a testament to what i was saying it's just she's good right um but 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 but, 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 but I do wonder why not just try go for it like were you doing like this us formatted approach or was it like me just kind of like over here speculating with my jokes i don't know i mean she sounds good but there are some fun parts that the girls could have jumped on like oh, like yeah. sarah's starting that second verse like it's a um it's a good times roll into one she could have did that like that's so her she could have been did that like mm -hmm. little things like that or even harmonies that were like 
that could have been stacked in that bridge totally. especially with that wonk the wonky sounds there like there's so many opportunities that were missed like how how hard is it to go all right love sing this part oh yeah oh yeah and she goes oh yeah oh yeah okay you love oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> it's not that hard just do it <laughs> it's not that hard right yeah um i will say like sonically speaking it sounds like a reject alley and aj song and granted they would release music like three years later <laughs> but i could hear it on their their um their earlier stuff with disney i could totally hear it um mm. and again i'm just trying to figure out if the song is meh because of just the one voice even though it's a good voice it's still just a meh to, mm-hmm. like arrangement or if it's because the song structurally structurally and I'm leaning more toward the latter because I don't think Nadine could have did anything that wasn't asked of her. So I'm yeah. I think if the production was given way more oomph, I think yeah, yeah. If the other members got some moments and stuff. This would have been elevated. Yeah. It just feels rushed. Yeah, and yeah, mm. just half baked, like I mentioned. Yeah. Um. So, so yeah. yeah. Um. So what do you rate this one? Mm. I'll be nice. I'll just I'll I'll give it a, I'll give it a six. I was going to put it lower, but I was like, that's, that's harsh. It's not a bad song. It's just not. Yeah, good I'll either. I'll do six point five. I mean, yeah, it's not a bad song in itself. Mm-hmm. I think it more just suffers in the in the actual production and stuff of it. All right, up next we have Girls Aloud with Girls Aloud, and it's written by Brian McFadden of Westlife and Jonathan Shorten, produced by Graham Stack. Well, first, I'm I'm sure these writers thought they were so clever with this word with this little word play oh here. Oh my gosh, leave um, them alone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I will say mm. I wish Xenomania produced it because it's such a generic dance pop <laughs> production, um, and I think that really takes away from it because the song mm. itself is actually pretty good. Yeah. And I think that I think the way it was done, like the over kind of the overly done, just like disco influenced, distorted, like sits and like, uh, you know, really generic dance beat and everything. It's just, yeah. yeah, I think it's a solid like girl group pop song, but it just makes it very faceless. Mm. And it's just the fact that it's called Girls Aloud that it's like, oh, it was written specifically for them. But if you didn't tell me that, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, it could it could go to anyone. Um, no, totally. So that I think if Xenomania took it, they could have done something really cool with it. So that disappoints me a little bit. Mm, um, that makes sense. And I do love though that a random Westlife member wrote it because this is very not Westlife at all. But but uh, I do actually like the vocal production on it though. Like at uh-huh. least each member gets a moment or two. Um, there's some nice unison moments that have a really good blend in the way that mm-hmm. they produced it. Um, I love. I love Sarah getting to randomly take some leads in the final choruses as well. So clearly they were thinking about like who was singing what because Nadine was doing the ad libs at the time. So they were like, yeah. oh, she's singing the ad libs. So then now this member needs to take lead here. Um, so, yeah. you know, there was some thought put into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think the lyrics are really, really fun. I love the second verse with Sarah and Nicola. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I think as a song, like I said, it's good. But oh, the production is just not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of you, man. Um, this feels like a Max Martin wannabe kind of track to me. Mm. It's not like a dead ringer. I won't go that far as to say, like, oh, it is a copy, it's a derivative. I won't say that. But I'm like, come on. Come on. Um, and I think the track is fun. Like it thematically fits in with the girls like rebellious and a flirty style. Um, I like the concept about going to the only place like where a girl's allowed. Wow, wow, wow. That was cute. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that. Like, hello. Um, I will say that the bridge section, like that never give up, remind you of the Spice Girls. Mm. Um, there's certain moments of the sun that reminds you of Spice. Again, it's like this is like the DJ mashup brain in me, but it's just it's welcomed. It's not bad. It's like never give up. And then da, 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 never give up. Da, da, da. I'm like, mm, interesting. And also the drums toward the end, there's like a slight section of drums that sound very samba-y. So I was getting spice up your life for like two seconds. Again, oh. again, I could be reaching, but my brain is like whirring, whirling, excuse me, with like different kind of like we gotta get you some people. dj equipment so you can yeah. demonstrate your mashups <laughs> yeah y'all as i'm like weirdly stroking the air join our patreon oh. and, and we'll start building a fund <laughs> oh my god yes y'all help me help dj shan get her life together um <laughs> but yeah they'll never give up dun, 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 like things like that again i was just like mm, i like that i like the bridge it's so much fun the song is fun but it's just 
Yeah, it's just, I don't think it was for them specifically. It's because girls allowed y'all change the lyrics around. It doesn't mean y'all wrote it for them. Don't do that. Or maybe they did write, like, hey, we have a girl group, just go off. They're called Girls Allowed. Mm. And they weren't expecting Sound of the Underground to be the sound or mm. anticipated Zendamina saying, this is my baby. Don't touch it. Like, you know, like, this is my squishy. <laughs> um, so who, who knows? At this point, I feel like a lot of people are just throwing their tracks at these girls. Totally. You know? Yeah. And this was, this one kind of feels like that. And it's, mm. it's whatever was trendy at the time. So. Mm. so they did promote this randomly on TV as well. There is a CD UK performance. So what do you think of that chair choreography? The pre the show chair choreography. <laughs> you see my face right now? It's just smiling at you. <laughs> Man, that performance, whoever came up with that choreo for Mars Attack was throwing the same choreography, but just on a chair. Yo, <laughs> yo, the fact that they were hiding behind the chair. <laughs> oh my God, that's my favorite part. The whole, for like, Four eight counts. They're just like that's what I'm hiding saying. behind the chair. Oh my god, it's hilarious. Like, what is that? See, me, I would have had some male dancers on the stage, kind of like, you know, doing something, something. I mean, they got male dancers later on on tour, but that would have been perfect. There's empty chairs with the open toward the front. If you would have turned it around with the opening toward the back, <laughs> maybe it would have been like, okay, we just see lumps. But the, oh my god. <laughs> oh. And then again, they get in the chair. You know what they do? Bend. And yep. roll. And yep. I'm like, yo, whoever choreographed, you stop, stop. <laughs> and you have them sitting down with the handheld mic, kicking their legs and doing fans and stuff. I'm like, get me out of here. Yeah. Um, More but... hands, too. You get the life got cold little hands, too. Um, yeah, not <laughs> so... very creative choreographer that they had no. at the beginning. Um, no. Luckily, they changed the choreo for the <laughs> yes. tour, the What Will the Neighbors Say tour, which I love that performance. The first yes. off, they made it just full on disco, which, yes. which was great. <gasps> And then we have the whole Le Freak, Say yes. Chic little moment in there. Perfect. So Perfect. yeah, redeemed it. Redeemed yeah, the song. Being being performed live really brings it to life. Like I like the song. Mm -hmm. It's just for me, I'm like, this ain't y'all. But then mm -hmm. performing it the, the way you described and the way we saw it, I'm like, okay, I, I can see this. I can see this a little bit more. But yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, so for the recording, I will give it a 7.5. Because, yeah, I think as a song, it would be higher, but the production brings it down. How about you? I, I wanna, I'm going to stick with an eight. I like the eight. I was like, yeah. Okay. I'll, yeah, like it. Up next is Forever and the Night, done by Gary Miller, Mark Mueller, Andy Goldmark, and Brian Rowling. If you didn't like my generic singing, but you like this generic song, I question your taste and you're not invited to the CCTV brunch. Chris, would you please kick us off? <laughs> Oh my god! Um, <laughs> I bring the brunch back. <laughs> I think when they were a and ring this album, they probably sent "Sound of the Underground" and then their very boring cover of "Stay Another Day" uh, as the two briefs. Yeah, and this is what we got. We got this really <laughs> bad attempt at another kind of like ballad winter single, Ugh, um, and it even actually it. has the same structure as "Stay Another Day." Uh, in kind of every way, like even vocally, like you have Cheryl doing all the verses, you have Nadine leading the choruses. The song itself is quite boring, especially those verses. Oh my gosh, that oh my melody God. is just so <laughs> yes. boring. So humdrum. But, you know, at least the, the chorus is is pretty. Like I think if, if you could use that chorus and write a better song around it, but the production is so horrible on this song. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's the production or if it's the mixing, but it's so you know... muddy. You know what? I thought the same thing. It sounds like something from the 90s, like the production itself. So yeah. I'm thinking the mixing might be leaning toward that because I'm just like... Very giving, muddy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's giving like a, a cassette tape or like late 90s <laughs> like yeah. B-side. I cannot. And then also, who are all the random women singing the BGVs? There are so Bruh. many random women on this song and I don't think Kimberly, Nicola, or Sarah are on it at all. Bruh. <laughs> I thought I was tripping. I was like, yeah, no, no, maybe I'm not paying attention. So I put, I rewound it, rewound it, rewound yeah. it. I rewound it a couple of times and I thought I was tripping. I was like, there's no way. Y'all sat here. It was like phoning in. I was like, like come on. It's, it's annoying because I know I'm a fresh fan, still a toddler here in the fandom. I get it. <laughs> but like this kind of ballad compared to like, how good their ballads get as they progress it's mm. so irritating even without that kind of knowledge i could listen to that and be like no like i know ballads don't have to be so you're the love of my life no one else has what we have like you don't have to do that <laughs> <laughs> like 
<laughs> Who does that? Like, <laughs> and, and, and oh, throw some women on it. It's be a hit. God, no, don't do that. Like, oh, oh, it just makes things feel a little fl- fillery. And uh, the chorus is too simple. I'm sorry. With that guitar, the guitar solo with the bridge and the wind chime pipe thing before Nadine takes us home. <laughs> meh. It's giving 90s demo. I'm, listen, yeah. again, if you like this song, I do apologize, but you are not invited to the CCTV brunch. If you are new <laughs> to CCTV, I mentioned this back in our forever Spice Girl review. The brunch is where you want to be, but we can't play this <laughs> song. It's not on the playlist. <laughs> sorry. Oh, Lordy. Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'll give this one a five. How about you? Um, it's a five for me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on to track 10 and we have mm-hmm. Love Hate by Brian, Niara, and Eve Bicker of Xenomania. All right, man. That intro was funky, boy. It's just like, like, it, let me not recreate sounds that I know are computer generated because I'm not a computer. Um, but it is interesting because it draws your attention right before those drums come in Mm -hmm. um and it's a third track right at the end kind of somewhere toward the end that keeps the spirit of sound of the underground alive Mm -hmm. Um, and it still sounds fresh so it's like the 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 genre is familiar but the approach is a little different like the the lyric the lyrics tell a story like a very generic story of a situation ship but at least the arrangement is so much more stimulating than the last track oh my god um i like the guitar section toward the bridge it is interesting and it's a nice break from all the vocals um but speaking of the vocals i like the spaces in between each verse like they're singing and it's a little slight break and they sing some more and Mm -hmm. and and i don't know if it's nicola or sarah but someone hits a nice little um head voice moment i think in one of the verses and i'm like oh yeah that's new i haven't heard that in a second no, it's interesting because I haven't heard a lot of headways with them singing. None, mm-hmm. none of ooh or nah, 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 none of that. And I'm like, y'all could do it. And some of you mm-hmm. have the perfect vocals to have a nice, clean little ooh, 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 or something. There's a couple songs I could use some ooh, ooh, oohs, um, mm-hmm. but I digress. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a this is an interesting one for sure. And it's definitely a little bit better than Mars Attacks. Um, not as fun, but still, 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 still um, solid for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's Nicola who's doing that little moment yeah. you're referencing. And yeah. um, I just have to say, in general, Nicola has been shafted oh during this entire album. I think yeah. it's really only Life Got Cold that she gets kind of a real yeah. moment in a song. She's literally not in a lot of oh these songs, or oh she only God. gets a little bit. So yes. I'm very glad she kind of gets her flowers later on in the discography. But I remember being very mad about that in the beginning. Uh, but yeah, this one's great. Uh, the whole kind of drum and bass and garage thing, mm-hmm. those two influences are just so prominent in this one. And obviously they're prominent in like Sound of the Underground and stuff too. But in this one, it's just very, very clear. Right. Um, I love how it kind of mixes that dreaminess mm-hmm. with that really harsh beat in the production. It's just a really mm-hmm. cool dynamic. And the chorus is super fun to sing along to. I think it is a very generic story, but the whole kind of, opposites kind of love hate you know <laughs> you <laughs> me yeah. Yeah, yeah like it's catchy and it's fun um yeah. and yeah they do all sound great um i i also think it's interesting in cheryl's verse i don't know if you mm. notice they mm. have her exhaling at the end oh. of each line but the exhale is a separate take so it kind of overlaps sometimes with her oh, line um and that's just for some reason always something that i've listened to and and looked oh. out looked for i guess or oh. I, something i've noticed every time i've listened yeah. to the song yeah. um and i think this song is a great indicator of what they kind of were gonna do after this album because i think mm. this song could actually be on some of the other later albums it sounds mm. a bit more mature i think yeah a great way to kind of bring back the xenomania because we haven't had them in the last couple tracks uh, yeah. So I think sequence wise, I Ooh. I like that they kind of placed this one near the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, honestly, I think this song kind of has like some stakes to it. Like it's just like it feels mm-hmm. very like, you know, like, like a fight scene between like those action movies. Love yeah, hate. there's a frustration. There's yeah. a nice frustration yeah, there. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, I think. Thank you, God. See, no mania came back. Oh, goodness, I need something to <laughs> uh, like a palate cleanser. That's the word you use mm. when we talk about certain things or. Yeah, mm-hmm. we listen to certain yes. soundtracks. We're like, oh, that's terrible. He goes, I need a palate cleanser. I'm like, oh, love that. Yeah, this one's a palate cleanser for sure. And uh, it actually has a pretty good rating. 
I almost gave it a 10. Almost. Mm. Almost. But then I was like, you know what? No. I'm sorry. No. Because the lyrics, it's just a little, it's not quite there. Like you can hear the potential and 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 the the top line, the, the melody is almost there, but it's not quite. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give it a 8.5. Okay. I'm going to go a 9. All right. So the next one is Boogie Down Love, which was written by Betty Boo, Paul Carter, and Amanda Glanfield. And again, produced by Betty Boo and the Beatmasters. Mm-hmm. So they're back after their little Mars attack. Um, and they did do a B-side. I think they actually submitted a couple other tracks as well that we'll talk about in our part two. Um, mm-hmm. But this one's interesting. Uh, it sounds kind of like 70s and 80s, but then still kind of has that futuristic alien thing going on for it. <laughs> yes. um, my favorite part is Nadine's kind of soulful pre-chorus that comes mm-hmm. in for that second verse. And I do mm-hmm. think the chorus is fun. The love me yeah, chants love and then me. that kind of distorted and kind of kind of those little whispers that come in mm. afterwards. Like, it's just an interesting chorus. And again, mildly chaotic, but not to the <laughs> point where it's noisy, which I appreciate. Not to, you think it's super noisy? A little bit, just a little bit. I, I think like... it's chaotic, but I think, yeah, I wasn't like overwhelmed at all during it. Maybe um, toward the ending, I didn't care for it. It was toward the end for me, honestly. Mm, oh, like, like when all like the lasers come in? Bruh, bruh, <laughs> oh my God. Don't get me started. Yes. Thank you. The lasers. <laughs> um, but I actually appreciate all the energy at the end. Like, I think this would have been a fun one to see them perform. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think so, too. I think it has, but we like, would have gotten like... more of the bend over and body roll. So maybe not. <laughs> love me. Bend, roll, roll. Love me. Bend, roll, roll. Join us, in the, join us if you're watching. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I think it is... Um, quite interesting because the song shocked me at first i was sitting here like (laughs) mind my business just left the last one i was like what's going on it's very wiry and wonky and i felt like i was in that you seen that batman dance scene like from the the adam west batman i was in there (laughs) <laughs> going off in the this one. I felt like I felt like I was in an episode of Batman, just in there. Nah, 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 nah. Um, and, or, or or even a SpongeBob episode. Um, but yeah, no, it was it was, it was interesting because when I heard the, the the chorus that "Love Me," I was just I thought of "Pick Me," "Choose Me," "Love Me." <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> so I just like, love me. I'm like, well, why? Why? What's, what's the context? And I listened to the rest of the words. And I was like, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. It's not as like, pick me as I thought it was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, at the end, it gets a little crazy because you get the bells, a ding, 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 and the mm. whistles and the distorted sounds. And, a <laughs> and then again, I felt like I was locked in a galactic battle and I was just trying to find the bathroom. Like, you know, you should like, oh, wait. <laughs> just trying to get out. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a bit much for me, a little bit. But no, I think they sound so cool. I love me, love me, love me. The champ's cute. Um, mm-hmm. they sound kind of sexy. Like the song is sexy in tone. The production is just a little quirky. That's it. That's it's not a bad <laughs> thing though. It's just crazy. <laughs> so that being said, um, on my way to the bathroom, I did catch a groove. So I will give this. Um, uh, I'll give it a seven. I'll give it a seven. It's not bad. Okay, so, I'll do a 7.5. I enjoy it. Up next, we have Don't Want You Back by Anders Badge, Michelle Bell, and Arthur Ferguson. And this is the only track on the original track list of the album that was not included on the November 2003 repackage. And I wonder why. Um, I don't agree with that at all. I think that was the wrong decision because this was actually another standout track for me, actually, when I mm-hmm. first heard the album. You know, I love a British girl group. So yes. while this song is quite generic and could mm. be like an Atomic Kitten song or something, that's oh. probably why I love it. <laughs> oh. mm. um, because I actually think the song itself is great. I think it has a really, really nice melody. Yes, the mm. lyrics are a little cheesy, but <laughs> I think just as a nice pop song, it does mm. its job. Um, you know, the Swedish people came through, you know, um, <laughs> and Again, they all sound really, really good. Again, Nicola's, I don't think is even on it, but oh. 
Nadine sounds great on those pre-choruses. And then you get Sarah's bridge, which I think is with Kimberly with the harmonies. And she gets Mm -hmm. that nice big note. That's the first kind of big (laughs) belt that we've had in a minute now. Um, So I actually really, really like this song. I think maybe not so much for Girls Aloud, right? For Mm -hmm. Girls Aloud, maybe it's a bit meh. Okay. But for a girl group song, Mm. I think it's good. And maybe that kind of speaks to like just how good Girls Aloud are as well. Um, Oh. But I still listen to this one. I enjoy it. I I hear you. I see you. Mm-hmm. But I do not agree with you. That's fair. I'm no, I'm joking. I'm teasing. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to lie. This, I think because it does sound so generic, I'm just like, ah. Oh. I think the chorus is nice. I think that's where I, I like the vocal stacking. Mm-hmm. I just don't care for the melody of it. I don't want you back. No, 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 no! I don't want you back. I just feel like, even for a, a generic pop girl, pop girl group song, it could have been so much better. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. Um, and they have so many fun tracks on this album. Then you get to this song, I'm like, I began to wonder when will it end so I can get back to the fun because it was just <laughs> like, oh come on, oh listen, I like the harmonies and the chorus, like I said. Um, and yes, Nicola. Keeping her up until the end is not okay. Y'all need to stop doing that. Yeah, guys, stop doing that. It's not fair. Because I only heard her like nor- like I was like, oh, there she is. And is she Sarah, even there? It was that wasn't Sarah singing, right? It was Nicola, right? For which we part? Right before Sarah's bridge. No, that's Sarah. The whole time. Oh no, poor yeah. baby. I'm ugh. <laughs> Damn, I was trying to give Nicola a bone. Dang. No, I don't think was, Nicola's even in this. <laughs> damn. I wish we could have got a live performance. I feel like this is one of those songs that they would totally deliver because they know how to emote well. I will say that a lot of the songs have been a little bit fun in nature. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one, I feel like was like a true serious track. And I would have been interested in maybe seeing a performance. Maybe that would kind of maybe change my mind. Mm. Um, the lyrics are a little bit generic, um, but I do appreciate the sentiment of like not letting someone back until they love you for real, but still, you know that you could have better uh, mm-hmm. so i like that because that's relatable as hell um <laughs> so relatable and uh yeah that's pretty much all i have to say about it. it's not it does not stand out track for me okay yeah so why would you rate it it's going it's sitting at a seven right now okay i'm going yeah. for 8.5 because i do enjoy it let me know which one you agree with yes comments do you like the song All right, so we're at the last track of the standard album. Mm. Yes, we know the UK had two bonus tracks, but you'll just have to stay tuned for part two of our review when we talk about those and also all the other B-sides from this era. Yes. Yes. So (laughs) track 13 is White Lies, which was done by Tim Kellett and Sandria Nordstrom. I think Sarah's, yeah, yeah. I think if she was more R&B influenced, her, with her singing style, she could have gone to a cute little riff with it as opposed to just like this blare, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Like I feel like she could have done something else because the <laughs> song leans itself, because the song leans itself toward like that, that Spice Girl style of R&B where it's still pop um, or the way the pop sounded at the time. Like I feel like she could have just like mm, really gave it because Cheryl, she sounds really good on this. I feel like this mm. kind of style fits her voice. And if she would have ended up in like some generic girl group that came from like, a show this she, she would kill this because she sounds good on it because she has a nice like balance between the pop tone and like being able to kind of get a little soulful a little bit i mean not she's not nadine but they both have their strengths and i think this is cheryl's kind of style for sure especially when you see what she does like kind of solo mm-hmm. um but yeah i i can imagine them strutting down the street singing to the camera with this chorus it is so like yeah Run and never die. It's angry, but it's really pretty. Um, um, the song again is generic, but the girl's personalities is heard in the song. So the vocal production, whoever vocal produced it, did a really good job. Um, it's not too much, it's not too little. And then Nicholas Bridge, oh my god, I love it. Mm-hmm. But I also do think they use only one take because there's no differentiation in the one tone. And yeah. I'm like, give the girl a chance. Dang. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Um, but yes. no, I, I do enjoy this song. It sounds like um, how soon is now from the charmed <laughs> soundtrack and also some other um like again random pop song from this time period so i mm. like the 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 quirky little weird electronic sounds is in it as well as some of the like quote unquote natural sounds of the guitar and the drums so yeah mm-hmm. what about yeah you? it's kind of that's it's kind of that kind of classic swedish pop thing like the rock mm. influence with the pop sensibilities all these max martin trainees 
you know, all coming <laughs> out to like write their right. own songs. Um, <laughs> yeah, I enjoy this one. I think like you said, it is again, a tad generic. And again, that's really is just a testament to how awesome Xenomania was at making mm-hmm. Girls Aloud really have their own thing going. But mm-hmm. again, I think this is a great girl group song. I think any mm-hmm. other number of girl groups could re- have released this as a single, yeah. as a successful single. Yeah. Like, I think this song is actually very, very good. Mm-hmm. And almost it was kind of wasted by giving it to Girls Loud in a way. Yep. Um, yeah. But I think it's super, super catchy. The chorus is awesome. Mm-hmm. I love the ruin and everything. Like yeah. that little <laughs> hook is really, really fun yeah. and super memorable. Mm-hmm. And the yeah, like you said, the vocal production is really nice. Like the little unison vocals through the chorus and the and the kind of the post chorus as well. Like just really, really well structured. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, again, a nice amount of sass, a nice amount of frustration from each of them as well. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's a solid track. Um, again, an outlier in Girls Aloud's discography. Yeah. But a peek at what maybe a generic album would have looked like for them like this Hmm. really could have been a single in another timeline for sure yeah for sure for sure i I think this Mm -hmm. one's good um and i think maybe because like the the two back-to-back like quote unquote generica songs Mm -hmm. um i think this one appeals more to my personal taste of around that time what was out so Mm -hmm. i think that's why i'm like oh yeah this one i don't mind it being generic but i just don't think it fits on this album yeah for them right so yeah Ooh, yeah. it's so hard to do these ratings and not consider the whole scope of like I know. I know. The album and not even like what they're gonna do next, but just the album itself and like what they were their image and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, so what do you rate it though? I'm curious. I will give it a nine. I think it's one of the highlights from this album. How about you? Yeah, it's a pretty solid outro. I'm going to give it um hmm, I'm being too I'm gonna give it eight point five. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're at the cut or keep section now. So if you had to cut a song off this album, what would you choose and why? <laughs> Before I give my response, if you'd like to cut one song from this album and keep one song to this on this album, please definitely drop a comment below. We'll read it. Um, we mm-hmm. love your responses because some of y'all are so funny. With <laughs> yes, please join in. <laughs> I choose to cut forever in a day and a night. In a day, mm-hmm. and a night, and a night, and a day. I just, I just, I just, no. It's not strong enough. Cont- even with the other ones that we rated pretty, like, on the lower spec- side of the spectrum, it just doesn't even stand, it doesn't even hold a candle to even yeah. one of the lower tracks that I rated. So, mm-hmm. nah, get rid of it. N- no, no. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you on that. I was trying to justify it at one point where I was like, maybe, maybe they felt like they needed a ballad on the album just to, like, give it a little <sighs> bit more of, you know, just a range. But, like, right. just as a song, it sucks. <laughs> Like the actual song is terrible, like in every way. So I can't even justify it with that. Um, yeah. Um, okay. If I had to keep a song, that's really hard. Mm. I think the one that still jumps out the most to me is mm. No Good Advice. Ooh. Like even more than Sound of the Underground, I think No Good Advice um. is such an awesome track. Mm, yeah, I'm going to agree with you on that one too. Look at us. Yeah, wow. I'm gonna agree with you. Yeah, that one's <laughs> yeah. I because all the good songs became singles at this point. It's just yeah. like I mean, keep them, keep all but a couple. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, so I guess as a final rating and just overall thoughts, I think mm. at the end of the day, it's a solid girl group album. I yeah. think, like we've been alluding to this whole time, this is Girls Aloud's least successful, least popular album like among the fans in general like they were clearly still trying to figure out what they were going to do and um there are so many flashes of brilliance and yes Mm. there are a couple duds and it's not the most cohesive project but i appreciate some of the risks they took like with the betty boo tracks um i think it's interesting to listen to to kind of just hear their potential vocally and, and kind of just what they were trying to do I don't know. I think it's kind of just interesting to listen to just in the breadth of their discography because it's the only album that Xenomania didn't do. I think mm-hmm. I'll actually give it an eight. Like, I think if you if you took this album and compared it to a lot of other girl groups and their debut albums, it yeah. stands up. Yeah. And yeah. one thing I've noticed uh, with UK pop, especially around this era, it was a lot of 
no, that's not a lot of, it's not a fair word to say, but I noticed there was this trend of hearing what was cool and popping in America and Brit popping it a bit. Um, it's not a bad thing because every country needs their representative so-and-so, right? It happens throughout music, but I can say without a doubt, because they decided to lean towards sounds that were very prominent in the UK soundscape, it made it like, oh, hang on now, what they're doing, what they're doing. So I think that's what definitely set them apart too. They were just like, here is, um, UK pops new sound, right? Even if they didn't know that was going to happen, the goal was it's a UK based group. Here it is. Spice Girls are kind of like, where are they? Mm -hmm. Here's what we got. And I think this is a good kind of like attempt at trying to capitalize on the success of a TV show group, you know? So I agree. I want to give it an eight. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. So the socials have been posting a lot of unseen pictures and we got the alternative yeah. mix of Sound of the Underground and the accompanying video with the unreleased footage, which was a nice surprise. So mm -hmm. I'm just glad they are celebrating all of this. I think, like I mentioned, this is arguably their worst and least successful album. So if they're doing <laughs> the most for this project, I'm excited to see what they're going to bring out for the other albums. Um, and I'm excited to do our part, too, because some of these B-sides are a mess. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no that's nice <laughs> oh no honestly <laughs> this mess that you're talking about uh we'll see what happens because i i want something that's probably never going to happen um and i don't want to say it <laughs> to have someone say it's never going to happen they said it's not going to happen but you know i want something that's never going to happen but uh it's nice to kind of see them together you know people talking again and such uh, if they want to release more pajamas i will buy them because they're i mean well mm -hmm. you will buy them for me and bring them please and, <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah no it's nice to kind of see this them as like cool again and being willing to release things and talk about it and talk about the fun they had i do wish um i do wonder if any girl groups coming down the line will acknowledge them um a little bit more mm -hmm. and i think it'd be fun to kind of talk about like their their effect on k-pop even with zenome i think it'd be a fun episode to kind of talk about but i think a lot of my wishes for them are pretty similar to yours pretty much in alignment with yours i'll take what i can get mm -hmm. um, yeah so... i think you know and mix it's time do a biology cover like that'd be awesome to oh bring that back oh my god you know? i was going to yeah. say one of the betty boo songs and mix need to take it <laughs> <laughs> all <laughs> right <laughs> Well, thank you all so much for listening and or watching. We would love to know what you think about the album. Have you purchased any versions of the new 20th anniversary edition? Let us know. And if you haven't yet, go check out our Girls Aloud Pop 101 episode where we discuss the group's entire career. And also let us know what other albums you'd like to hear us review by commenting below or messaging us at CCTV Pops on all social media. And of course, if you want priority choice, you can come join our crew on Patreon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for our YouTube channel. And if you're enjoying the show on a podcast platform, please give us a follow, rating, and review. Until next time, that's Shan. That's Chris. And we're signing off from CCTV, the nonstop pop show.